This section deals with the diaspora and new beginnings. The Parsis had lived as a favoured minority under the British. With independence, this small elite saw other communities catching up and a change from the rule of the few to mass politics. With a threat to Parsi economic and social identity, policy changes such as the prohibition of alcohol which took away income from many middle class urban and rural families in Gujarat who dealt with alcohol, the Land to the Tiller Act which took away land from the Parsis, later nationalization of banks and mines and finally the takeover of Tata Airlines in India, there seemed to be a major change in the attitude to private ownership. In Pakistan, unfortunately, political instability became a part of life. With this came a major migration of the Zoroastrians away from the newly born India and Pakistan to a seemingly more liberal society in the West and Australia. The migration from Iran after the fall of the Shah of Iran in 1979 and the Islamic Revolution brought together Iranian and Indian Zoroastrians in the diaspora after over a thousand years of separation. The large institutions built in the Indian subcontinent, their places of worship for over 1000 years have slowly emptied and the predicaments of progress seem to have caught up with those left behind. Independence Ceylon, later called Sri Lanka, too al lost almost 50% of its Parsi population in 1948. But as happened in India, and Pakistan, those left behind continued to be leaders in business, professions and the services. The Zoroastrian diaspora speaks with many voices as can be seen over here from Japan to America and across the world. In Great Britain, the first recorded arrival of a Parsi is as early as 1724 with Navroji Rustamji Manek Sit, while by 1861 Mancherji Hormazji Kama Dadavai Navroji and others set up the oldest Zoroastrian association in the West, now called the ZTFE or Zoroastrian Trust Funds of Europe. They maintain a separate burial ground in the Brookwood Cemetery and have a Zoroastrian centre with a prayer hall. With Lord Curran Billimoria becoming the first Zoroastrian member of the House of Lords in the British Parliament recently, they have now spread across England. Following the first Zoroastrian, A.C. Vardia, 1851, the migration to North America was largely of professionals, scientists and academicians who had come as students in many cases. The 1970s and 80s brought waves of Iranian Zathushtis to North America and with the start of the Federation of Zoroastrian Associations of North America, Fezana, constituted in 1987, Zoroastrians from two homelands found a new home. The generosity of Iranian families has enabled the development of tangible assets in America. Infrastructure, particularly religious places of worship, were created. Journals, exhibitions, participation in interfaith activities are community efforts. Links with India and Iran continue, but the new developments are driven by a practical approach to issues such as intermarriage, by the ecclesiastical creation of the North American Morbid or Priest Council in 1992. This means they frame their own laws according to life in a new land. The identity crisis is evident but is being faced in America and Australia with united efforts to keep alive philosophy, doctrine and values of the religion by mixing and matching traditions from Iran and India with their own emerging identities. Across countries today, writers like Babsi Sidwa, Rohintan Mistri of North America, Keki Daruwala, Gev Patel of India, artists like the late Jahangir Sabawala, who lived much of his artistic life in France, straddle many worlds. However, with the third generation of those born away and demographic decline in the original homelands, has come a realization that without serious efforts, a culture could be lost. This has given rise to a movement from India of a return to roots. Accompanying this realization is the power of the internet and instant connectivity across the globe.
One of the predicament of development is a dwindling population. And a victim of this has been the Parsi community. To address this, the government of India started the Geo Parsi project. While the Indian government works on the Geo Parsi program, which literally means live Parsi, to increase births, and while the demographic picture in India, Pakistan, and Iran is not reassuring, there is simultaneously more awareness of the Zoroastrians available than ever before. An internationally acclaimed media campaign was launched to create self-awareness among the youth of the community, which by creating controversy went viral and brought the issues of the Parsis to the forefront. The holding of the World Zoroastrian Congress in Perth, Australia in 2018, followed by New York 2022 July, shows the shift from small migrant groups to a confident established Zoroastrian presence. Today, Dubai and the Middle East have taken up the historical role of Aden as a trade center for Zoroastrians. In each of these varying regions, a special effort is made to keep the religion and culture alive. A new development over just the past decade has been a search for traditional roots among the Central Asian peoples where in Iraq, the Kurdish Zoroastrians have created a center and Baku, Azerbaijan, Georgia and other such regions explore their culture and identity while enjoying festivities like Navroz. However, the double diaspora of a small community can also lead to the situation of what Robert Park called the marginal man. Cultural hybrids at home everywhere and yet nowhere. While the diaspora seems to grow stronger, the largest number of the community, around 50,000 individuals in India, have to face a total fertility ratio, TFR, of 0.8 per married couple, when a replacement level should be 2.1. There are large percentages of the unmarried and a senior citizen ratio of over 30% of the population. After surviving from the Bronze Age, are the Zoroastrians now heading towards demographic extinction at a time of peace and plenty? Is a global identity positive or negative for a culture? While individual Zoroastrians continue to lead as pioneers in fields of human endeavor, will this faith survive? These are issues which need to be examined as many other communities across Asia globalize and try to adjust to life far away from their places of origin. There has been attempts to recreate beliefs and showcase the community, assisted by the Indian government as well as institutions across the globe. Zoroastrianism is a religion of action, deeply rooted in ecology and belief in the inter-assimilation of all life forms. The modern age was one of instant gratification and consumerism. The postmodern age with the COVID pandemic is perhaps more humble as it recognizes its mistakes. A more holistic image of life is now the focus. The earth is not to be conquered and ravaged, but is a partner without whom there can be no life. <laughs> این دود من شاد به حال آفرین باد همان در کسان را زرتشت دین شاد باد ای دون باد خواهان باد قرب از خدا را همه انجمن را دین زرتشتی را همه بهینان را So we come to the end of a circle which Zarathustra had spoken of in the Bronze Age. Man at the end of the modern period has perhaps recognized the wisdom of being a hamkar or fellow worker of the Lord of Wisdom. If humankind is to survive, humility and active protection of ecology and a fight against pollution, both physical and mental, is necessary for our human future. I end with a Zoroastrian blessing 
Ushta te, which means happiness be unto you.